good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Elimination Chamber 2019 full show review and results. As you guys know, in these videos, I'm going to take you through the entire card, letting you know exactly what happened at the show and all of my thoughts in between. So let's go ahead and get started. So, of course, we kick things off with the kickoff show, guys. We had the Cruiserweight Championship on the line between Buddy Murphy and Akira Tozawa. We're continuing that theme that I do not like, where the Cruiserweight title is on the kickoff show. I think this is very disrespectful to how great the Cruiserweights are. Buddy Murphy is at, on an absolute tear. I went into the match thinking he would win, and he did win this matchup. It was very enjoyable. I loved it. You know, uh, Buddy Murphy, every single match I think he's been in, every title defense, he has looked really good, and he just proves why he should be the Cruiserweight champion. Much like Neville, when he was on his tear in the Cruiserweight division, same result here. Akira Tazawa does lose, but he looked really good, really strong, and he looked great in defeat here. But Buddy Murphy does retain, even though we still don't have a figure of him, and I'm constantly waiting waiting for Mattel for that release. So the main show does start off with our Elimination Chamber Women's Tag Team Championship match. And, of course, we did have the six teams in here. We had the Boston Hook Connection, which I hate that name. We had Sasha Banks and Bayley, Carmella and Naomi, Nia Jax and Tamina, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, the Iconics, and the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. Boston Hug and Fire and Desire start this thing off. So we had Sasha, Bayley, Mandy Rose, and Sonya Deville all starting this thing off. I thought it was kind of weird how this matchup started. We had, you know, a weird synchronization. It was like they were kind of off at times, a little bit botchy here in the beginning of the matchup between both teams. I think they were just trying to get their feet warm, you know, trying to get a little warmed up to start off the match. Really sick spot came when Mandy Rose's foot got stuck in the wall and Bailey hit a neck breaker on her. I thought that was a really great move. That could have even been used as an elimination. It was not. In come the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. They were getting a little bit messy here and there, kind of spotty, you know, like a bunch of spots it seemed like were happening, just rapid fire, you know, uh, different suplexes and thrown into the walls and all kinds of stuff like that. I really enjoyed that part. Um, because I don't like too much dead space in between. That was that was really nice there. We had a big double suplex slash powerbomb in the corner by every team involved, so all three teams getting some action in on that. The Iconics enter at number four. They honestly did not look good, guys. I mean, I like Peyton Royce a lot, but Jesus, man, they, they looked weak. They were yelling all over the place. I know that's their gimmick, but good Lord, Billy Kay is definitely the worst of the two, but just Jesus, man, I don't really know how to feel about that. They were cleaning up each team member, you know, just beating on everyone. Um, they took, uh... Bailey and Sasha smashed their face into the chamber walls, which was very nice to see some aggression from the ladies. They turn their attention to Sonya and Mandy, you know, throw them into the chamber walls. Then they move on to the Riot Squad, do the same thing to them. In checks Naomi and Carmella. We had some booing and Corey Graves chants. I wonder why that was happening. They knock everybody into the corner. You know, they're sort of doing some Bronco busters and things of that nature to every team. The field would then clear up, you know, everybody trying to, you know, clear up, everybody laying all over the place. And then out of nowhere, it was like every woman, it was like different pairs of two would come into the middle of the ring and just hit a big move or a finisher. It was really sweet, like just people coming in left and right, hitting suplexes, uh, super kicks, spears, just all kinds of great stuff. I really enjoyed that portion of the match. There for about 10 to 15 seconds, just people coming in and laying out people with different moves. We have a stare down with Mandy Rose and Naomi. They go at it really nice right here. The Iconic sneak up behind and double roll up Naomi and they eliminate both. So the Naomi and Carmella are eliminated first in this elimination chamber. After that, in checks, the all that is Nia Jax and Tamina. They come in clearing house. I, I do not like Nia Jax and Tamina, guys. I, I just, if you guys follow this channel, you guys know how I feel about them. But anyways, they... Uh they clean up everybody. The Iconics try to hide back inside their pods. That does not work, obviously. The strength of Nia and Tamina on display. They open up those doors, but they yank them out of the chamber, throw them into the chamber walls, and just clean them up pretty nice. They hit a double Samoan drop, and one, two, three. The Iconics are eliminated by Nia and Tamina. There's some fighting against the teams. Liv Morgan gets on top of the chamber, dives and takes out Nia and Mandy Rose. Top rope Samoan drop to Liv Morgan. Tamina with a terrible-looking Jimmy Fly Snooka drop onto Morgan and Logan, and they are eliminated. So we're down to Nia and Tamina, Bailey and Sasha, and Mandy and Sonya Deville. Nia misses Bailey, trying to gore her through the pod, sort of like uh, Goldberg, and she goes straight through the chamber pod. It looked really nice. She sold it really well, just crushing the hell out of those pods. And then Tamina gets finished up by Bailey and Mandy. Elbow drop by Bailey, Macho Man style, and eliminates Nia Jackson and Tamina. Thank God they were eliminated, guys. I I was just so, I was so worried they were going to win this match. I'm so happy they did not. 
So they get eliminated. We're down to the teams that started off this thing. Bailey and Sasha and Mandy and Sonya. And I thought they had a great little back and forth right here. Tons of, I was on edge the whole time. They had some great near falls in this thing. Some great back and forth. The end of the match would come when Mandy goes for the spear. Or no, Sonya goes for the spear on Sasha Banks. She would miss. Plow into Mandy Rose. Sonya Deville then freed up. Backstabber, bank statement, and Sonya submits to the bank statement, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Naomi and Carmella are gone. Nia Jax is gone. Carmella and whoever the hell left is gone. And there are your first ever WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. They deserved it. I'm so happy that they won this matchup. This matchup was much better than I thought going in. It wasn't as sloppy as I thought. Of course, it wasn't a perfect match by any means, but I'm super duper happy that Sasha Banks and Bayley win this thing, and they won walk away as your first ever WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. They totally deserved it, and I cannot wait to see where they go from here. I thought Mandy and Sonya Deville looked really strong in this match. Really good stuff here, and I'm so happy for Bayley and Sasha. What a great way to start the show, and I'm so happy with this result. Up next, guys, we did have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the best friends Shane McMahon and The Miz defending their championships against the Usos in this tag team matchup at Elimination Chamber here. This matchup was solid. I did enjoy part of it. I thought that it started off a bit slow, but you know, they had some pretty cool moments. You know, we got the the Shane coast to coast into a super kick at one point. We had, you know, some nice little transitions between the Miz and one of the Usos. We had another we of course we had to have the signature Shane McMahon elbow drop from the uh, you know the turnbuckle to the announce table. And uh, Miz did end up getting rolled up. He went for the Skull Crushing Finale. He could not flip. I don't remember if it was Jimmy or Jay. Could not flip over Jimmy or Jay to get that pin. And it was one, two. Rolls up Miz real quick. One, two, three. And the new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions are the Usos. And we knew this was going to happen. I mean, let's be honest. I honestly didn't know if it was going to take place here or at Fastlane. I guess if you do, you, you pull the trigger here. You give yourself a little bit more time to book a storyline and to have a WrestleMania match for The Miz and Shane McMahon. So the Usos win their sixth, I think it's their fifth or sixth tag team championship in WWE. They add the blue strap again in their careers to that little dynasty that they have had over their career, a illustrious career of tag team championship runs. And they add another one here at Elimination Chamber. Solid little matchup. Nothing to write home about. It was a solid matchup in my opinion. But the Usos do win and now we know that these two are going to, you know, break up eventually and then uh, end up having a WrestleMania match. We all know it's going to happen, but that's the result of your match and a little decent little tag team effort. Next up, guys, we had the Intercontinental Championship match between my boy Finn Balor taking on Bobby Lashley or Bobby Trashley, as I like to call him here. And this matchup was pretty much just a story being told. You know that Bobby Lashley is the enforcer. You know, he's striking his dominance and his strength over Finn Balor and, of course, the pettiness and the annoyance of Leo Rush getting the tag in whenever he can, just sort of avoiding Finn Balor the whole match. Um, you know, getting sleek little hits in, but then, you know, tagging Bobby as, as soon as possible. And, you know, just dominate and dominate. Finn Balor finally gets some room. He gets on the comeback. Um, you know, beats up on him a little bit. Hits the somersault over the top rope. Takes out Leo and Bobby. Throws Leo back inside the ring. Hits a huge shotgun drop kick. Hits the coup de grace. Bobby Trashley cannot recover. And they go down, Brad. And finally, my boy has championship gold. Give me the championship, Bobby Lashley. Finn Balor, my boy, has championship gold once again and thank god it is so beautiful to see he so deserves it you could say this is the AEW effect you know they don't want him to run off there and join Cody Rhodes in the Bullet Club and everything so they're going to give him this intercontinental title they don't want you know their beast to get slayed by him but they, they want him to have a nice little title here so they're going to give it to Finn Balor here I love it Finn Balor intercontinental champion I can get behind that this is the right move they're making all kinds of right moves here before WrestleMania, I think that this is the right freaking move, man. You let him go into Fastlane, have a decent little match, or he could even be left off of the Fastlane card if you want him to. I don't care. Or maybe have an open challenge. Have him tear the house down at WrestleMania as the demon to kick off WrestleMania. Just freaking blow the freaking roof off of the joint and have this man... Bring the Demon to WrestleMania, win in the opener versus whoever, and have the Demon undefeated at Mania, retain that IC title, and go on a hot-ass Seth Rollins-esque or better Intercontinental title run going into the summer. That's what we need right here for my boy Finn Balor. Super happy for him. Can't wait to, you know, enjoy this run. Look great here. Great win. Thank God he won the title. 
Hats off to my boy Finn Balor. Next up, guys, we had the Raw Women's Championship match between Ronda Rousey and Ruby Riot. Of course, Charlotte Flair would be at ringside just to be in this match, obviously, because she replaced Becky Lynch, right? So she's going to be at ringside to, you know, just watch over this match and see who she's going to be fighting at WrestleMania, and uh, honestly, guys, they they freaking buried the hell out of Ruby Riot in this matchup. I did not expect this at all. I thought they were actually going to have a solid little matchup, but the story of this was not that at all. Ruby Riot would get put away very easily and buried. I hate this for Ruby Riot. I think she's a great talent. I thought they were going to pull each other to a great match. That was not the case at all. It was a burial, and it was terrible. So. That is what uh, happened there. After the match, Charlotte would get in the ring. They would face off. And out of nowhere comes my girl, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch does come out, and she's got this sick Kill Bill-inspired gear on. She walks out there on crutches, and, you know, she comes in the ring, and she's staring down, and she's fight or talking to Becky, or talking to Charlotte, talking to Ronda Rousey, you know, just getting in there, crowds going nuts and what have you. And then this happened. And then after she goes to Ronda Rousey and just... Referees come out and yeah guys, that was pretty much this segment. Becky comes out and beats the hell out of Ronda and Charlotte and pretty much Becky hoaxed uh, Ronda into turning onto Charlotte because you know w months back when Charlotte beat the hell out of R Ronda Rousey with those kendo sticks that was sort of you know playing into this saying you know she beat the hell out of you beat the hell out of Charlotte and then of course she attacks her from behind crowd goes nuts and that's the end of this segment getting cut off by Trash Corbin's music. Up next guys we had this total waste of a time between Braun Strowman and Trash Corbin guys I literally could not give less of a damn about this match. I don't know why this match is happening. It's a no disqualification match. I had zero interest to it. I barely even paid attention if I did at all. I was literally on my phone on Twitter the whole time just ready for this thing to end, man. I did not care about it. It was a waste of time. And at this point, guy, I mean, I already don't like Trash Corbin. And I, I just, at this point, man, Braun Strowman, I just do not care about anything that he's in. I, I've said this a hundred million times on the channel. You can go back a hundred different videos. I've said that Braun Strowman had, like, my ship for him sailed way long ago. It's been gone. It's been sunk. It, it is the Titanic at this point. I do not care about his character. I don't want him as champion. I don't want him anywhere. Like, I don't know, man. It's just annoying to see. I, I don't like Trash Corbin either. And this is just a total waste of time. Braun Strowman was apparently beaten up on, uh, Trash Corbin. Out of nowhere, Bobby Trashley and Drew McIntyre show up with steel chairs and they start beating the hell out of Braun Strowman. The whole group is just beating the hell out of Braun Strowman, beating the hell out of Braun Strowman, just beating him down, beating him down. They set two tables up and through the tables goes Braun Strowman and I just did not care. Trash Corbin wins the matchup. I don't know where this is going. Whatever Mania match this is leading to between the six. Didn't Bobby Trashley just lose the IC title? Why does he even care about Braun Strowman? I, I don't know, man. I, I just, I don't care. Monday Night Raw is in shambles. So glad Finn Balor won the IC title, but th this right here, I mean, this is this is just trash. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Men's Elimination Chamber for the WWE Championship between Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton, and the champion Daniel Bryan. Kofi Kingston obviously replacing Mustafa Ali coming in here. Joe and Daniel Bryan would start off the chamber match. They had sort of a submission battle going back and forth, hitting the hell out of each other, man. I mean, they, they had scars and bruises and just all kinds of red marks all over their bodies. Kofi Kingston comes in third. He comes in hot, just tearing it up. At one point, Daniel Bryan climbs on top of the chamber pot and sits Indian style. And then Kofi and Joe sort of fight it out in the ring. Then Kofi, like, platform jumps on top of the chamber and starts beating on Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan would start running away, you know, climbing away across the chamber wall. Kofi would give chase. And while he's giving chase, Joe tries to take people down. He tries to take Kofi down, but he kicks him off. Then Joe goes after Daniel Bryan. And Daniel Bryan and Joe are down there. And Kofi does a trust fall off the wall. I thought that was a really nice spot there. The next one in there is AJ Styles. He comes in fourth, going ham on the field. Phenomenal forearm to Brian. While Brian is climbing along the chamber wall, knocks him off. Very nice spot there. Samoa Joe locks in the Kokita clutch on Kofi Kingston from behind, but Kofi does get it bro uh, broken. Joe gets nailed with a phenomenal forearm by AJ Styles, and he is eliminated. I don't like that Joe was the first one to be eliminated, but I guess somebody had to pay the price here. And with this star-studded field, you know, I guess it is what it is. That did suck, though. Jeff Hardy comes in fifth, nailing all his signals. 
signature moves, you know, taking out everybody. Um, just looking really good there. Daniel Bryan wrenched Kofi's arm through the chamber wall. I thought that was a really cool spot as well. Just really, uh, I love when, uh, you know, they get creative and use the environment. That's what these matches are about. Hardy hits a swanton bomb onto AJ Styles while he is resting on the top of the turnbuckle. I've never seen anything like that. Thought that was really creative, really scary spot. And after he gets up from the Swanton Bomb, immediately takes a running knee from Daniel Bryan and gets eliminated. So then AJ Styles is stuck in the tree of woe. Daniel Bryan goes to German suplex Kofi off the top turnbuckle, but AJ wraps his arms around Daniel Bryan, and we get a tree of woe German superplex spot in the corner. Very, very nice stuff. We're down to Daniel Bryan, AJ, and Kofi. Randy Orton checks in. He's taking out everybody. AJ goes for the phenomenal forearm on to Kofi. Randy Orton, of course, intercepts it, and uh, sort of while AJ is still on the springboard there, Randy takes his face, RKO's him, and eliminates him. So we're down to Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, and Kofi Kingston. Randy Orton didn't really do much in this match, man. I thought that he should have probably been one of the final ones. I mean, I don't know. He just didn't look very strong to me. Jeff Hardy didn't really play a part in this match at all either. Trouble in paradise to Randy Orton, and, and he's eliminated. So we're down to Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston, guys. Yes, Kofi making it to the final two here, and we had a lot of great back and forth, really good stuff between Daniel Bryan and Kofi. The crowd was going super hot for Kofi, man. They wanted him to win so bad. I was I was so on edge. I thought for sure that Kofi was going to win this thing. I, You know, in the back of my head, I was like, nah, they're not going to do it, but the, the, the environment and the crowd in, in Houston was just going nuts for Kofi, and I thought they were going to give it to him. A lot of great near falls, a lot of great back and forth. Ultimately, Kofi does bail off the top of the chamber, misses Daniel Bryan, takes a running knee, and is pinned one, two, three. Kofi Kingston is eliminated, and Daniel Bryan does retain his WWE Championship and he will be the champion headed into fast lane. And honestly, I don't know what we got out of this show overall. I mean, I thought that, you know, it sucked that Kofi didn't win. I thought that this was a star-packed Elimination Chamber match. And while I enjoyed it, I just felt that not enough... I, I guess, like, everybody didn't get their stuff in. I think there were a few MVPs. Obviously, Kofi looked great and Brian looked great. But the rest of the field really didn't add much to this match. I mean, they really didn't do that much. I felt that they didn't get their shine in. They didn't get to, you know get some, I don't know, it just something was missing from it. The show overall wasn't terrible. I mean, you had your Trash Corbin and Braun Strowman match, which I didn't care about. Ronda burying Riot was obviously terrible. The Usos and SmackDown Live Tag titles were, you know, that, that was nothing special. I liked that the Usos won, and I liked, you know, the Chamber match over. I don't know, man. Just, it was just a blessed show. It was like a meaningless show, I guess you could say, but that pretty much does it for your entire Elimination Chamber 2019 review. I hope you guys did enjoy the review. If you did, comment down below your thoughts on Elimination Chamber. I would love to know your thoughts. I honestly don't know where we're going from here. Who is going to step up in this role? Obviously, Daniel Bryan's probably going to play a role. I don't know what goes from here. I don't feel that anybody really built upon anything. This was pretty much a meaningless show. I guess we're going to get a reset on SmackDown Live and see what happens. But thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, again, leave a like, comment down below what your thoughts on the show were. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy epic WWE and WWE action figure related videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.